going on everybody it's your boy sb is the truck star and welcome back to another dance hall video tutorial now one yeah we are cover mixing again you understand we are kind of take it to a new level still we are cover everything you know what i mean we are create own delay our own reverb we are set up a bus compressor um we all do punning um automation if necessary you might spice up the mix add some ear candy you know what i mean balancing and all of that type of shit you know what i mean and i'll just show you how to get certain instruments certain elements to stand out you know what i mean just like how you want to stand out so we are work with 14 trucks we have about eight synth element part or melody parts and then we have six kick drum 808 and snare and that type of shit you understand what i say so i crank it up make your ear walk go on then we do swallow out the instrument the man and get to work proper way Alright, so here we are going. Cool, so let me see. We'll reset everything now with all, you know, kind of go from scratch. We have pianos, we have strings, we have apps, we have all kind of shit that go on that track, yeah? So let's just reset everything back to where it's supposed to, there where it did there. And then we can definitely get started with the mixing process. So the first thing what we do do is we do set up a bus compressor right this is um i think we can easily get misconstrued right so for this example we will use the waves ssl bus compressor um if you have something with um with a ratio setting between one to one and two to one anything we can get between one to one is a good place to start. I am not sure if this bus compressor have that availability. So in this case, we have two to one, right? So if we load up another one, let's try from Waves. Actually, let's go IK Multimedia. And they have a very good bus compressor based off of the same SSL bus compressor I'm up on the screen right now. So I got Dynamics and we do bus compressor TR5. All right, so we have, here you go, we have 1.5, we have um, 2, 4 to 1, and 10 to 1. So this kind of have everything we want, so we don't just get rid of the BX townhouse. And then what I'm also doing is we don't load an EQ in front of this, so we don't load up the, actually we'll go with Sonax, so we'll load the Sonax EQ. So first, let's turn off the, the bus compressor, the EQ, I'm going to do with it is just a simple high and low roll off. So the roll off 31.3. And then we'll roll off up at the top end now. We'll do 1.9860. Boom. So 19.86 or 19.86. That's literally all we'll do with the EQ later on. Me show you exactly what that do. So now what I'm going to do is go in and set up the compressor so we get about 2 to 3 dB of gain reduction, right? So the first thing, reset the makeup gain to zero if it already they at a different number. Absolutely important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drive up the, the mix until we're there about 6 dB. So right around over there right now without my vocals. I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to drive up all of the instruments until we get to about 6 dB. Anyway, in between six to five, that's fine. And then we'll all dial up the compressor so we we'll start get like two to three dB, four dB maximum again reduction. But we are aiming for two to three dB because remember, so the ratio sets are low, a lot of stuff don't come through anyway. So we do um, first, let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm kind of like the option there. Um, and then let's play the mix and drive up everything. Till we start um, get close to minus six dB on the master. So let me mute my mic and then dial up the compressor.
cool. Now, let's go into the compressor. We'll just switch this to 1.5. We'll just start adjusting the thresholds till we we'll start getting some compression. That's about perfect. So basically, if you explain what we do, what we do, do is we do leave this on the screen as well so we can pay attention to it as we are mix. I want to stay in at a 1 to 2, 3 dB range. right? So, so even though I talk right now, you see that trigger, and we are staying in between 0 and 4. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what we want. So basically, what we just do is, like I said, we um. Let's get these uh, menu off of the screen. So yeah, basically what I just do is me um get the compressor for um kind of glue together the mix, you know what I mean? It nah squash it, it just a clamp down upon certain levels of signal, you know what I mean? Like I said, we want to get around minus six because we are mixed, we don't have no master or nothing like that, so we want to kind of keep it under control. If you have set up a bus compressor, you always use that first. Mix into a bus compressor. Don't mix and then put a bus compressor upon your mix at the end. Reason for that is if you think about a console, which is what a bus compressor pretty much get it named from, we not really get it named from, but make it name, make it, you know what I mean, really shine. Upon a console, a bus compressor did it from jump, you know what I mean, it's not nothing where you can just plug in when you're done, it upon a console from the start of everything, so your settings and everything are the setup, that's exactly how you treat this, even though you're in a digital space, but you have the option to add it before or after, if you don't use it, it's best for you use it before and mix into the compressor as opposed to trying to mix and then put the compressor upon it. It will work either way, but it all depends upon the situation. You understand what I'm saying? So that's perfectly fine. Now that we have that away, let's can start properly mixing. We'll start off with the main element of this track, a string from Philharmonic. So let's um, take this pattern and bring this up. All right, so as you can hear it, I've reverb on it. That's fine, you know what I mean? We don't add a reverb to it anyway, so that's fine. So let's create the first bus um, or send that will be a reverb. The reverb one we don't use is one I'm kind of falling in love with a little bit is the Eventide SP2016. Um, so let's find that. I have a preset called a reverb, what I really like, custom preset, making an another view. So I'll turn on the high frequency again. What I'm going to do after the EQ, I mean after the reverb is we're going to add an EQ and for that we're going to use the, the Crave EQ. Not a lot of people know about this EQ but it is a very, very good EQ, mark my words. So we'll double click at the low end, we'll double click at the high end, we'll change both of the slopes, one to a high cut and one to a low cut. So let's change that to high, change this to low. Smooth up the curve, and what we'll do is pretty much we'll filter out the reverb, right? So one way you can do that, you can hear the reverb while you filter it, that way you can tweak the reverb to your own likeness or whatever. Um, is all you do, especially in FL. Um, what you can do is, we need to find some of the put this um, bus compressor, yeah, this thing, yeah. take up too much real estate. So let's go detach, um, let's put this up at the, let's put it at the bottom, click here. Yeah, so. so one way you can um, tweak the reverb 
is the instrument where you send to the reverb, just disconnect it from the master. So now if you play, you're not going to hear the philharmonic there, so. But if you come across, I'm going to send the signal to the reverb. No, you can hear it. So without sending the signal 35%, what we do now is we can tweak the reverb. So if we want it to be brighter, we, you know what I mean? We can do that. Don't really want that though, so. Let's reset that. Then let's go back into the reverb itself now and tweak some stuff. So the position wanted kind of big, so we'll go about 60%. And then the decay, we don't increase that to about, actually we'll lower that to about 2.8%. Um, second, turn down the high frequency again, increase the low frequency again. Now what we don't do is we don't kind of fine-tune the reverb. So a lot of these spiky little things here, so. Change the slope filter, we don't go notch, all right? I just want to kind of carve out a little bit of certain stuff. As far as the high end, we'll do a little dip right there, so. And then for some body, we don't increase right around here, so. You know, so if we turn off the EQ, you know what I mean? I can hear when we filter out all of the unnecessary stuff, it kind of make it a little bit bigger, which is cool. So let's link this back to the main channel. What we do do to the signal itself, we'll chop off or we'll EQ it. So for that, we'll use the Sonax EQ. Just kind of come feel like the situation, call feet a little bit. Um, and what we do do first is we do filter out, we'll do 24 dB per active, and we'll filter up to about 55. All right, we did actually have to do a little bit more than that, but that's fine. Let's take the high end, we'll do a shelf, we'll turn that on, and we'll do a boost, and we'll come back to about 4K. We'll take this right there, so what we'll do is we'll dip it, like that, we'll turn it on, and we'll dip down right in that region. If we boost it, you hear this, which is cool. But we want this a little bit dark, even though we don't boost the top end with a shelf, we want to take out a little bit of the 4K, that's a real way to get the presence, so we'll take out a little bit of that and boost the, um, the 4K shelf. So without the EQ, you know, it get a little lighter, tighter, and it get more present, you can hear more of it, you know what I mean? With the EQ off, you can hear more bass, but we don't really need the bass because the 808, that's what reserved for the 808, so you really want to get that out of the way of the 808 and all of that type of shit before you, um, you get to the 808, you know, and the mix and then when they get to the 808, they try to find room for it because it's a wobble and it, you know what I mean, it do all kind of weird shit when they're supposed to they do. So if we move on, we have a second string, and this is where we just start pan instruments. So if we bring this volume up and turn it on, Philharmonic again. Cool. Let's turn this down. Let's do something with this Philharmonic real quick. So this will create a second scene. We'll go rename, and we'll call this wider. The reason why I call this wider is because we don't do two things on that channel. The first thing we don't add is a plugin called wider from Polyverse. The second plugin we don't add is a plugin called Micro Shift from Sound Ties, one of my favorite plugin companies. Them don't make no fuck. Remember that. So if we take off the wet, I mean the dry signal. And just listen to the wet signal or without send into the micro shift and the wider. Let's even turn off the reverb channel. So let's send this in about 25%. Alright, so that's it going into the wider and the micro shift, right? Nothing special. So let's turn off the micro shift right now. Let's turn on wider. And then you can hear how the sound get wider, right? That's more central. 
that's more left and right. This is where the micro shift come in now. What we all do is we all try and spread that even more. So let's turn down detune. Let's turn down delay. Make this a little bit tighter. We'll increase the focus. And then we'll make sure that the mix there 100%. And we'll go through the style to see which one sound better. Nice. Nice, nice. All right, perfect. Now we can move on to the second song. Like we said, we don't pan this. We don't go 60% to the right. Or thereabouts. So the way how we don't get this sound for kind of fill out the spectrum, we don't use reverb and a little bit of delay. So firstly, we don't EQ the sound, kind of clean it up a little bit, make sure set present. We want a lot of the top end if it kind of shine through. For that, we'll use our EQ from Grammar Tech called Babylon. Very good um, parametric EQ. Need to do a review on it, to be honest. But um, for right now, let's worry about what we are worried about. Without with the EQ, very nice, very transparent. Uh, if it did have more features, I'm gonna love it, but <laughs> I like it, you know. What I mean, it's cool, it's a nice EQ. Want some more features in it, though. Um, so let's send this to the reverb channel. If you listen to this by itself. Cool. Right beside or right around track 30, what we do is we'll load up a file and we'll go tap in here. And so what this plugin chain do is is a bunch of plugins on and nothing but address the top end of the 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 audio. So we have an EQ, we have a compressor, we have the virtual mix rack with a shit ton of plugins. We just add you know kind of brightness, saturation, you know what I mean that type of stuff. So it's all about boosting the clarity in at the top end. So once we send the signal to this, just watch how it change up exactly what I want. Nice. So let's move on to the next song. We have the tubular bells from Expand. 
First thing we'll do, solder them out. We'll add some reverb to them, about 50%. Next thing we'll do, we'll copy. And we're not going to copy, we'll just get this soft tube compressor. This, I believe, in real life is a five to $10,000 compressor. But the plug-in version is um, very good, to be honest. So we look for about 3 dB of compression. We'll go ratio 2 to 1 or even lower than that. We'll go release stupid fast, attack stupid slow. Increase the threshold. Cool. Now, we're going to throw an EQ. I go with some um, analog away. So, what we do, do? Filter out, low end, tap in with our kind of cut back pan. Actually, we can boost, but we can filter it at the same time with the high pass filter. Send the signal to wider. You can hear the difference if you turn it off. Without. With. Just a massive difference, you understand what I'm saying? And then lastly, let's increase the reverb to about 60%. Finally, let's put a limit upon this. The, I'll use the fab filter L2, fuck it. I'll limit the minus 17, so I'll do oh, minus 14. Increase the gain by 4. Everything together. I'm going to do is open this a little bit more to the left, so I got about 35 40%. Now we have the call to war arpeggiator. So let's turn off the hard reverb, let's turn off the low fight delay, and we have this. So I want to try and make that as wide as possible. I want to take out some of the bass as well so we don't have no conflicts later on. No better way than with the EQ on a compressor. Why not use one that have both? And then. So first, let's filter out the low end.
add back the reverb now, 25% or so. Look a bit of the wider. For the EQ. Too much bass, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of start getting the urge to kind of drive the expand right up in Mega. So let's try that and see. All right, so let's swap out the limiter. Let's go with the waves. L L L L L L L L L L. I'll go with the waves L2 instead. Alright, cool. Let's go on to Predator with the first op. So because we have seemingly movement already there's not a lot into this you know what i mean all we can do is really try just make this as um, much big as we can it's a very light sound it's just some um, clicks and some you know what i mean like glitch and shit like that so let's add some reverb let's um send it to the wider let's listen to it in the mix now And I mean, it's not a very overpowering sound. It's just something more just fitting. Let's go to Anna with the second up. All right, so we have a couple of ways where we can address this specific sound. So first, we can use the stock EQ, or not stock EQ, but the stock stereo plugin from FL Studio Stereo Shaper. Use delay. Can I get a little bit of a um, delay that go on between the left and the right channel and see how that sound? Alright, so I like that. So I'll keep that. Let's go into waves. I want to do is we'll go for the SSL EQ. And let's go to filter in or we'll filter up to 126. Analog on. The reason why I'm coming here is for the tapping. So let's go three. Cool. Let's send this to the reverb. And to wider. Now what we'll do lastly is we'll get some movement with Panman. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just don't um, decrease the width, increase the smoothing, increase the rate. Yeah, so I'll just have a little bit of movement here, and I it just sit down right underneath everything. So if we put it back with the truck. I 
you know, you can see the, the compressor still not jump like that car when I get to the minus 6 yet, you know what I mean? So let's keep going. Let's do the kick. No song, let's go in. So nice kick, but not as dark and as punchy as me would have wanted. So what we can do is we can increase the transient response using SPL Transient Designer Plus. So basically what we can do is we can make the kick sound a lot more aggressive. If you listen to the front of the kick, more snappy. You can turn on the sustain. Cool. All right, what we'll do is we'll send this into the Pug Tech. 660. Get some compression going. But now, when we listen to it, it thin. All right, there's a quick fix for that. There are a couple of steps that we can use to fix that up. First, we'll load up the stock EQ from FL. We have a preset called Kick EQ. Immediately, kick it dark, you know what I mean? Then we go back to waves. Let's load up the Pug Tech EQP1A, which is not in this bundle. So let's go out of this. Load up the other waves shell. And let's get the Pug Tech EQP1A mono. So now we can boost and attenuate, and you know what I mean? The whole works. So let's put this up to about six. Put this at 16, 10, 10. 100 is perfectly fine. 4.3 for the boost is good. And the attenuation without a 3.6. Notice how the boss compressor start jump. because we start get some some heat, you know what I mean? Let's go into the 808 now. First step, let's go Fab Filter Pro Q3. Then we do add a compressor to it for do some side chaining. Fab Filter Pro C2. We'll change the default setting here so and change that to master filter and we'll just add the kick as a side chain option side chain to distract processing side chain kick Take care of them. They would all fine tune the bass a little bit more. Might 
actually no, there's no might about it let's right click on the base right click route to this track only now we don't send another level to this track then we don't take them two track here and we don't route them to this track so we have right here so we don't rename bs auxiliary or just put bs a ux this we don't call bs dry I would call this BS wet. Now remember them are coming in with the um, side chaining already done. So I will change the color on them and I'll go blue. Upon the wet channel, I will insert a plugin from Audiority called Screamer. Now the abuser, sorry about that. Let's change this color. I don't know why that takes so long for change. Then we have a preset I'm going to make a while ago called Motorcycle Rev. The reason why I like this preset is because if you look on one of the, the knob, see it a jump around, love it for that. And you can hear the tapping, that grit, and that, you know what I mean? I just really love that about it. So let's go back to the fab filter. carve out some of the so what we'll, we'll do something on me call um um and we'll do some more like a creative eq but uh we'll that's like yin yang eq in uh, what we we'll do to one we we'll take away from the other so we'll load up the fab filter up on the other version just as well and what we we'll do is because more one, one of the lower end and one of the top end, that's exactly how we do treat them. So we do roll off, roll off the one, we do have the lower end at 30. And then we do do a, uh, let's go 24 dB per active, actually 18 dB fine, per active at about 2,000. And then upon this I wanna know, we do start, this a roll off here at about mm, one eight, 1800. So if we just listen to the bass. Or oh, do a roll off up top to see him here, about 15K. But what we do do is we do blend it. We're not just make it run loose like that. So we have the regular signal. Upon the track, we do add the L2 from Waves. Should have add the mono version, but that's cool. And once the final level, we're good with. like minus 18 should be a good level and minus 20 as the threshold would all keep the release fast or a little bit fast and it will blend the two signal what we can also do is upon the wet signal we can add something like wider or not even wider we can even add micro pitch So now the 808 sound like this. If we increase the A 
And then on the wet signal, we'll add a little bit of reverb like this. Back with the kick. So what I'm gonna do is gonna swap the fan filter. The pro scene should I never want to do it in the first place, but let's side chain to this track and then let's disconnect the side chain from this track. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take the pro C delete it. And now all I have to do is just go in and reroute the side chain in. And click kick. And we can also do kind of get rid of a little bit of that fuzz there. Kind of just roll off all that. And now if we listen to everything together, we can just adjust all of the, the settings. Near. Snare. So what I'll do is we'll go right click, rename, but I'll call this room. The reason why we're calling it room is because the reverb what we'll use is a room reverb. So let's go I can multimedia T Rex 5 reverb CRS or CSR room. And then let's design a room. Or right, let's just load a room. Let's um we we'll use it as a send, we'll all go. Um, piano diffusion, snare room, snare, snare, reflection zone, real ambience mode, drum room. Let's send it to it. 25, 30%. Truck. Cool. Let's begin the traps near now.
second snare, more of a snare roll. bring in first we'll bring in the string from x1 it's another spiccata string yeah so in this case what i'm gonna do kind of the same type of eq you know use the sonax eq definitely want to get rid of um the low end there um, so let's bring this to 36. shaper from FL. Put it on delay. Alright, cool. What do I do also is we'll send it to the top in here. Kind of brighten it up. Then we'll send it to the reverb about 45, 50%. We'll send it to the wire about 55, 60%. And then a little bit of the room. Then we'll add a limiter rear case, but sometimes it's necessary. Can I use limiter and them stuff to another that? Put this to minus 13. to release all right let's drop the volume and let's blend it in on the track So now that we have the strings playing on one side, then we are going to bring in some pianos. We don't put the piano on the other side. You know what I mean? So we don't put these 80% or so to the left. So if we play two together. Sonax EQ. Actually, I'll use Overlord EQ84. <laughs> and with the first do a roll off up to about 200. Fuck it, we go up to 300. That's fine. Then I'll turn on the high frequency. We'll boost that. What we'll do is we'll cut some of the high frequency though.
I increase the line volume. Then we don't send it to a shit ton of the reverb. Bucking on the truck. And lastly, let's add in the lead. Before we EQ it or anything like that, let's add tremolo or tremolator. Add reverb. Wider. And in the room, a little bit at the top end. Without all of that, you know, just a little weak sound. Walking at the truck, let's blend. So it's not as drastic, it's very light, you know what I mean?
understand? So if we go back through it one by one, you know what I mean? So we can pinpoint everything, make sure so we have a good balance, mix everything the way it's supposed to. Don't really too louder than what it's supposed to. You understand what I say? We pay attention to it to a boss as we as we go along, right? So firstly we have the philharmonic strings, the main melody strings. And we have the offset strings. We have the tubular bell. <laughs> then we have the orchestra hit. We have the little glitch up. Regular arm. If you forget where it's on like. Kick. This. Snares. Sneer rule. And we have the pianos. Body strings. And the last but not least, we have the lead. If you turn off the bus, compress on the EQ. Very subtle change, but there's somewhere you definitely notice the more you, you do it over time. So now, lastly, for me in the video, last thing I want to add, we're not going to master it fully, just to show the mixing process. We don't got waves all over the J37. And everybody should know my favorite preset in this by now. Mastering fat, tight, and open. We'll change the noise level to minus 22. We'll change the saturation level to 2.365. And we can adjust the bias and the speed if we need to. So let's turn it off first. Just listen to how it makes the thing come alive. It just inject some needed ear in the mix. That's without the tape machine. With the tape machine. Just eject some life. You understand? So until next time, it's a boy, it's me, the track star on the quest and leave them down below if you make it this far in the video. Anyway, peace.